Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Welcome back, guys. Hey, today I got a 94 Geo Tracker. It's a uh, four wheel drive. It's got a bad wheel bearing, so I'll be showing you how to replace that. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe a bad wheel bearing without taking it back out and taking it for a ride with you guys. But if you ever hear that sound in the front that sounds like an a airplane taking off or a helicopter or something, like a whoop, 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 like type type noise that is consistent. Most times it's either a bad tire or a bad wheel bearing. In this case I believe it's a bad wheel bearing and uh, I could tell it was coming from the front so I simply just jacked up the front end and felt the front wheels and spun them and this one's pretty obvious so let me take you in here and show you. Yeah I got the right front jacked up and uh, I'll show you how I determined it was coming from this side and you can almost hear it when I spin it hear that dry sound. A lot of that is your brake pads rubbing, but you can hear more of a barren sound when I spin it if you listen close. And uh, that's the sound of a bad wheel barren. Well, it also, uh, it's hard telling which side it is while you're driving it. It's so many times I've, I've second guessed myself and guessed wrong. On the, on the wheel bearings because it sounds like it's coming from one side but the noise travels because everything's connected and uh, the noise will travel through metal almost like a stethoscope so it's really hard to tell what side it's coming from so sometimes if you have a front wheel drive you can jack it up and actually put it in gear and uh, determine what side it is however this one is four wheel drive so I'd have to go through a lot more to determine that however this one was pretty obvious when I jacked it up Another thing, when you're driving, when you're first starting to go bad, when you turn to one side, you could, when you slightly turn the wheel, you could hear it kind of change noise, and then when you're going straight, it gets that airplane noise coming back. That's another sign of a bad wheel bearing. And uh, usually, if you can make it change, it's a, it's a bearing going bad. So let's start by taking the front tire off. Okay, the next step, you're going to have to remove the caliper and the, the bracket because we're going to have to pull the rotor and the whole hub off of this. So instead of taking out your two 12 millimeter bolts here and removing the caliper and then the two bolts for the bracket, just jump right to the bracket. There's two bolts in the back, they're 17 millimeter. Let's remove them two bolts. And then you can move everything as an assembly. Like you see the bracket, those are the two bolts that you're going to remove on the back side. And that just removes the caliper and the bracket at the same point, at the same time. I'm just take and tie it somewhere up out of the way. Okay, now for the next step. This has manual locking front hubs. There's no, no reason to take the hub locking assembly apart. So what you need to do is remove these bolts around the perimeter. They're a 12 millimeter. You can use a wrench. What I do to keep it from spinning is I'll simply just take and uh, start a lug nut. I'm not sure if I need two. And then I'll take a pry bar and I'll put it on the floor like that. That'll keep it from spinning. And then just remove there's two, four, six. Just remove the six bolts around the perimeter. Alright, before I take that all the way off, I want you guys to hear hear that wheel bearing now, and that's what the brakes remove. So I was eliminating the brake pad rub. So it's obvious this wheel bearing's bad. Before I go too much further, I don't want too much rust and everything falling there. I already got ahead of myself a little bit. This rotor removes off the spindle. So there's two jacking holes. Hopefully they're still good. What you do you just simply And your bolts like that. Sorry about the compressor in the background. Why you put on your video.
going to install the hub assembly and as you can see look at all that metal we're going to have to take that apart and clean it but uh, it's like got water in it let me wipe this grease away you'll see that there's a ring that has Phillips head screws that lock it in place take and remove them four screws Okay, once you got them four screws removed, this piece will simply come out. It's just a locking ring. This is what has the, I guess you'd call it a key stop that goes in the keyway. Okay, set that off to the side. And this is your nut. Now this thing takes a special spanner wrench type socket that goes on there, fits inside the holes and uh, you can unscrew it. Correct. Once you break it loose, it'll simply unscrew. Then from there, everything simply pulls out. It might be a little tight because there's a, a seal that pushes in. However, there's nothing that's not a pressed on piece. This one's being stubborn because the, the inner races are probably like rusted on there from the wooder. So what I'll do, I'll get a harmonic style type puller and I'll simply put it on here and pull this out. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see what I got there, but it's simply a, a harmonic balancer puller that's actually stripped out, so I'm just using a bolt with a nut. And I got two longer bolts screwed into the spindle. And like I said, it shouldn't really be a pressed in a race fit, but uh, it's probably just being held up from rust. So we'll try jacking it. Wow. There she goes. Yeah, she was just rusted up in there pretty good. Alright, let me take you guys over to the bench. Alright guys, here we are on the bench. We got the hub. There's another uh, like washer type thing that goes on here. I'll show you when we put it back together. We got that off already. And you see the, this outer barn. That one should come right out. The top. If not, we'll just leave it there. But yeah, it comes out. <clears throat> it's not a sealed barn setup. Like it might look like it should be, but it's not. So that's the outer barn. Then when you flip it over, you got your seals. There's actually two seals on this. You want to take and get yourself a seal puller. And just pop that out. I got all new seals for it, but um, you're going to want to buy new seals and bearings. And once you got that out, and on the inside here, so you can wipe this out. See there's a snap ring. Okay, you get yourself a set of snap ring pliers and a pick. I really don't need a pick but to me it just makes it easier. Once you get it started then you can pull it up out. Pretty hefty uh, snap thing. Remove the snap ring. You can take and remove the, the inner, inner barn. Okay. Now that race is all one piece. That's a solid race. 
Okay, you see now that what I'll do since that snap ring's removed, I'll take and I'll put this in my press just like that, and use this use this bearing as a pressing to press that out. Let me show you. Let's go over to the press. I got the inner baron or the outer baron back in, pushing against the race. And I got myself a socket that fits that inner race of that baron. Perfect. And to get it started, I can only press it so far like this, but it's your initial press takes a lot of pressure. Once you break it loose, then it uh, presses out a lot easier. So, let me get some safety glasses. Okay, let's see if we can press this thing out. Lock this. I'm going to stand back a little bit, guys, just in case. You never know. It's a lot of pressure. Okay, we're bottom now. Let me release it. <clears throat> what I mean by bottom, bottom now, the race came down as far as it can until it hit the, the base. Some more. And now I feel better about pressing against the outer hub. I can't get perfectly straight, but now that it's now that it started going, it should be fairly easy. Let me get that center. I'm just gonna let it fall on the floor. She's a part. I might be able to get a better picture. The outer race is one, one piece. And when I did, I simply installed the Baron. That gave it a nice pressing surface. And pressed it out. It goes out the same side as the snap ring. The retaining ring. Right, I'm going to clean this hub out, and then we'll press the new and erasing. Okay, let's see what we can do. Now this new Baron, this new Baron I got is more of a sealed style Baron. It, it uses rollers. It's actually the cheaper of the two Barons I could have got, but they didn't have the other one in stock, so therefore I had to go with this style. But if it was the same style that I took out, I would remove the Barons and use an old Baron to press it in. However, I don't have that option right now, so I'll have to uh, press it in like so. I'm going to use the old Baron and Race to push it most of the way. And then the rest of the way I'll use uh, just the inner.
at a the bottom, the main race doesn't start until the outer pressing surface doesn't start until further down. However, I'm going to have to start uh, Uh, as much as I don't like using a new barren to press it in and rest it away, I kind of have no alternative at this point because I don't have a piece that will fit. If I go using the outer race, it's going to press partially in. I really can't have that. Yeah. So, see what happens. If it starts feeling too tight, I'll have to stop and get the right tool. Feel too bad, and the bearings feel great, so we're good. All right, let me take it back over to the bench. Once you got the new baron pressed in all the way, you'll know it's in all the way because you'll be able to get your snap ring back in. seal that you got. Push it in. You don't have to tap these ones in. They, they fit pretty good. Take a little bit of grease and just wipe it around the, the lip of that seal. Let's put it back together. Pretty much to put it back together is just a reverse procedure. So if, uh, if you're not interested in watching me put it back together, then you can just uh, move along. If not, stay tuned. Let's put it back together. See, like I mentioned before, you got all your parts cleaned up. So I got them all back from the parts washer. Clean this sub up. The new inner seal is going to go. If it doesn't slide over that easy, I'll clean it up with a piece of emery cloth. Got the hub. It's just a piece of thousand grit. It's a pretty snug fit because you don't want the inner race spinning, you know what I mean? So that's what everything else. That inner lip, that inner step in your nut, when you tighten it up, that pretty much holds your inner race from spinning. Your outer race is pressed in. So. seals fit tight inside that that shroud so you'll feel like giving you a little resistance and then it'll slide in like so okay next this is that thin washer I was telling you about I don't think I captured on when I was taking it apart 
and simply slides in. That tightens up against your inner race. And it's time for the nut. We call that a spanner nut. Then you want to just tighten that down and set it to the preload or the torque that they recommend. Actually, that feels perfect. There's no play. And there's very little preload on that. Let me see where this ends up. That actually lines right up, so most likely that's where it was set. And that feels good. That feels nice right there, that's where I'm going to leave it. Otherwise, I'd have to go to that next hole. That's way too far. Or I'd have to loosen it up and go to that hole, and that'd be way too loose. Therefore, that's telling me we got it right where it was set from the factory. All right, take and use a little bit of Loctite on them screws and reinstall them, tighten them up. Okay. Sounds a lot better, don't it? That's what it's supposed to sound like. Now if you look at this this hub, this this locking hub. There's an O-ring around that perimeter. Make sure that's in good shape. This one looks pretty good. Reinstall all your bolts and tighten them up. Once you got them all tight, then you take your rotor and reinstall it. Just take a peek behind it, make sure you don't have any major rust build up. You can see where the jacking points were. I'll put the rotor back on in the same, same manner I took it off, so it's in the same spot as far as that rust build up. And just to get these ready, some nice little never sees, make it a little easier for the next guy. Install the caliper. Torque them the specs. Now it'll be hard to tell because you got your rotor that's not square. Tag. 
Okay, I just zip the wheel tight. When I let it down, I'll torque them. But as you can see, that sounds much better. That's the way it's supposed to sound. No more rumbling. And uh, we're good to go. Check your play. Everything feels tight. And like I said, I couldn't go any tighter with that to get to that next hole. Otherwise, our preload would be too tight. And if I would have went back to the previous hole, then it would have been too loose. So pretty much that's another indication. If you get it nice and tight and you can still spin it freely and your hole's lining up, if you gotta come in, you gotta make a minor adjustment, then and do so. But you don't want to make it too loose or too tight. And uh, that's perfect. You can hear a little rubbing, that's just the brake pads rubbing the rotor. And um, we're good to go. Alright guys, like always you can follow me at toolsandtime.com and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.